and welcome. This video is about an evaluation tool used in gynecology called the bladder diary. The learning objectives of the video are as follows. We will understand why keeping the bladder diary is important, identify what to record in a bladder diary, teach patients how to accurately record this information, learn how bladder diaries help patients and doctors talk about symptoms, understand how bladder diaries shape personalized treatments, explore ways to analyze the diary data for better patient care, and discuss challenges like patient cooperation and accuracy. So first, let us understand what is the meaning of a bladder diary and what does it contain? It is a record of urinary habits and patterns which are kept by the patient over a specific time period, usually a day or a few days or perhaps up to a week. It typically includes details such as the times and the amount of fluid intake, the times and the volumes of urination, and any associated symptoms of urgency or leakage, and notes on relevant activities or events. It is important to understand that this diary is used in the assessment and the management of lower urinary tract symptoms, such as overactive bladder, urinary incontinence, and other symptoms. The information collected in the bladder diary helps healthcare professionals understand urinary habits, identify patterns of symptoms, and tailor the treatment plans accordingly. Any woman who is experiencing ur urinary symptoms or conditions such as frequent urination, urgency, incontinence, or nocturia can benefit from keeping a bladder diary. This includes individuals with overactive bladder, infections, pelvic floor dysfunction, and other symptoms. The diary can be kept both from, by men and women of varying ages under the guidance of the healthcare professionals to better understand their urinary habits, track symptoms, identify patterns, and inform treatment decisions. The basic components of a bladder diary include the time and amount of fluid intake, of urination, urgency or leakage, or any other associated relevant activities or events. To elaborate further on this, the diary can include the following. How much fluid was consumed during the day? At what time were these drinks taken? How many times did the patient urinate? And what was the volume of urine voided each time? Did she experience any urgency to urinate or any leakage? Did she have to wake up at night? If so, how many times? And what activities was the patient engaged in when she experienced urgency or leakage? Did she notice any specific triggers for urgency or leakage? Did she use any techniques or strategies to manage the urinary urgency or leakage? For example, wearing sanitary towels, pads, or even wearing a pamper? 
did she consume any specific foods or beverages that seemed to affect her symptoms did she take any medications such as diuretics or supplements that might influence urinary habits and did she engage in any specific exercises or activities which were aimed at improving bladder control did she experience any pain or discomfort related to urination or any improvement or changes in symptoms compared to previous days so this is a very detailed list of items that can be included in the bladder diary and the bladder diary can be as complex or as simple as desired depending upon your patient population and depending upon how much information the patient can put in the bladder diary patients will find complex information challenging to record and in most cases the diary is kept very simple to allow compliance and recording of important basic details there are many advantages of keeping a bladder diary and these include understanding the pattern of fluid intake and output to develop personalized treatment plans for the patient for better communication because the patient may not be able to give a clear picture of her urinary symptoms just by taking the history by monitoring progress so it can be used to see if treatment or management has made any improvement for improving awareness in the patient herself about her urinary habits and how it relates to the various times of the day the night as well as the amount of fluid which is she is taking in as well as empowerment by actively participating in the management of their urinary symptoms the individual may feel more empowered and in control of their condition it is important to educate the woman to keep the bladder diary very clearly and concisely and for this it is sometimes challenging if the patient is not educated and especially if she cannot read or write the education starts with an explanation of the purpose for which the diary is being kept and for emphasizing the need to identify patterns and triggers which may, can induce urinary symptoms instructions on how the information has to be recorded and demonstration of the fluid volumes which are taken in or the fluid volume which is passed out as urination for this the patient will need special containers or cups to especially for recording urinary output the patient is provided with further education about practical tips which you may learn from patients who have kept diaries previously and offering these practical tips to the patient customization is done according to the to the patient women's lifestyle and specific urinary symptoms it's important to encourage and to motivate the patient to keep the diary so that there is a better understanding of her symptoms by herself and by the healthcare provider and it is also important to use this diary as a follow up after management or intervention has been taken place there are many challenges of keeping the bladder diary and uh, these ch these challenges include patient compliance because some individuals may find it very challenging to consistently record their urinary habits and symptoms in a bladder diary due to forgetfulness lack of motivation or feeling overwhelmed by the process there may also be inaccuracies in the recording of the information and the estimation of the fluid intake or the urine volume leading to unreliable data there may be interpretation of symptoms such as urgency or leakage which may be very subjective leading to variations in how individuals perceive and document their experiences in the bladder diary 
Individuals may also feel embarrassed at times of, or uncomfortable disclosing certain details about their urinary symptoms, particularly if they involve incontinence or other sensitive issues which can affect the reliability of the information recorded. External factors such as busy schedules, limited access to the washroom or the restroom, or disruptions of daily routine can impact the ability to keep and maintain a bladder diary consistently. Sometimes the healthcare provider may ask the patient to take time off from if she is a working woman, but then this will not give a very reliable pattern because you have now removed her from her usual normal lifestyle. It may also be challenging to identify meaningful patterns or triggers in the urinary symptoms from the data recorded in the bladder diary if the individual's habits and symptoms vary widely from day to day. This can be true for women who are field, field workers and who are spending a lot of time traveling either by foot or by uh, transport as part of their work. Patients may also get bored uh, just keeping the diary and so and therefore in some healthcare providers will only ask the patient to keep the diary for one day and try to take as much information as possible from that, that documentation. And language and literacy barriers is a major challenge and this can be overcome by using um, uh, simple methods of uh, pic putting in pictures or small cartoons which can help the patient to understand how to record the information. Perhaps you may be working in an institution which does or which does not use a bladder diary as part of the patient evaluation tool. So what is the current evidence regarding use of bladder diary? This article was published in the international literature of Urogynecology Journal by a group of international authors, and they have reviewed the literature. The article was published in 2023. This literature looked at the use of bladder diary, and they found that uh, even uh, consultants who had been trained in urogynecology fellowships never or rarely used bladder diaries. Most respondents reported difficulty in using bladder diary and they concluded that more research is needed to improve the ease, accuracy and widespread adaptation of bladder diary use in clinical practice. So the bottom line is that the bladder diary is a very useful tool for evaluation of lower urinary tract symptoms. So the question is that why should a gynecologist, especially if she is a generalist, have knowledge about bladder diaries? The reasons are many and some of them are as follows. There may be overlap of symptoms such as frequency, urgency and incontinence and it may not be very easy to, to identify the clinical assessment of such patients. The diary also gives a comprehensive assessment of patients with pelvic floor disorders affecting the lower urinary tract. It allows collaborative care with urologists or other specialists in managing the pelvic floor dysfunction. And it can also have a role in preventative care. Treatment planning, post-operative management and patient education. So it is important for a generalist and a gynecologist to have an understanding of bladder diary and also to use the bladder diary for evaluation of patients who have urinary symptoms pertaining to the lower urinary tract. So knowledge of voiding patterns in women is essential for early detection, diagnosis, treatment and prevention of urinary tract disorders, ultimately improving women's quality of life and their overall health. So what do we know about the urinary habits amongst asymptomatic women? This is an article that was published in the year 2002. 
but it is an interesting article because we, this is among the very few articles talking about normal women and their voiding patterns. So this study was done in the United States, but they looked at a multiracial population to identify their voiding patterns. And in this study, they found that the races that were represented were 39% black women, 39% white women, 12% Hispanic women, and about only 9% Asian women. They found that subjects voided a median of eight times in 24 hours, and 95% of the subjects recorded fewer than 13 voids per 24 hours. This patient population represented all ages and was not confined to a young group or an older group. They also found that they, a median of four voids per liter of fluid intake was seen and uh, a median of five voids per liter urine output was recorded fewer than 12 voids per liter output. Nighttime voids were recorded by 44% patients. And polyuria was present in 18% of patients. Linear regression analysis also showed that the number of voids was related to patient age. So the more the patient age, the more chances that the number of voids would increase on fluid intake. So the more fluid intake, the more urine voided and the number of times voided. And it seemed that in black women, they had the volumes were lower. And so the women needed to go more frequently to pass urine. Linear regression further showed that the voids per liter of fluid intake varied with age. And they were higher amongst Paris women and Asian women. And the number of nighttime voids depended only on patient age. So the higher the age, the num larger the number of nighttime voids. Generally, we believe that women will void between four to six times during the day, especially when they are younger. And it is only after 50 to 60 years that they will get up at nighttime to void. This is if the fluid they are drinking is normal, two to three liters per day. 60% will pass out as urine and a small percentage in feces. Fluid intake will also be utilized during expiration and sweating. So with this kind of information, let us move on and see some examples of interpretation of bladder diary. So depending upon the information which is recorded by the patient, the healthcare provider, be it a nurse or a doctor, will analyze the information. So the first information that is to be noted is how much fluids is the woman drinking in a daytime. This could include tea, coffee, soup, iced tea. And what is the pattern in terms of frequency and volume of fluids intake? The expected normal fluid intake would be two to three liters. In case the woman is drinking much more than that, it could mean she's producing more urine and that may even be associated with hyponatremia. If she's producing too much urine, despite taking normal amount of fluid, this could be a case of diabetes or the patient may be taking diuretics. The amount of urine which is being produced is important as it can be an indication of a normal bladder or an overactive bladder. In this example, we see a simple documentation of a bladder diary. In the first column, the entries are of the amount of fluid which has been taken in by the patient. And in the second column, is the urine volume which is voided and the time at which it is voided. 
and in the third column are the symptoms associated with the voiding during the daytime as well as in the last row during night time. So looking at this diary, one can see that the amount of uh, urine that is being passed is anything between 180 ml to 200 ml or 150 ml and the maximum is 300 ml when she has taken in 500 ml of water. So if we consider that the normal amount of urine which should be voided uh, per void is about 250 to 350 ml then she's actually voiding at smaller volumes or lesser volumes of 180 to 280 ml. Also she's experiencing urges to urinate frequently throughout the day especially after consuming coffee and iced tea and um, the uh, and at two o'clock in the afternoon she had a leakage because she could not reach the restroom in time and uh, she also had nocturia twice during the night time when she had to wake up and every time she passed 150 ml of urine so when you see this kind of bladder diary documentation then how do you make an assessment so the first thing you do is you take a vo total volume of uh, fluids which were taken in by the patient the total volume of urine that was outputted in the voids and your assessment in this case it seems that the patient is not taking in enough fluids and she's passing as much urine as um, the amount of fluids that she's taking in, indicating that her kidneys are fine. But she's having disturbance in her life due to the incontinence and her night sleep is also disturbed. She's not drinking enough fluids, thus putting herself at risk. She must increase her fluid intake and perhaps cut down on coffee. She will need further testing to understand the bladder activity, which is leading to urgency. Chronic decrease in fluid intake can lead to fatigue mood changes and decrease in alertness. So the not only is the urine symptoms affecting the quality of her life, but her reaction to this is that she's taking less fluids and that is also maybe affecting the quality of her life. So this patient needs a lot of education and a lot of assessment to be able to provide a better quality of life towards her. This is example number two. And again, in the first column, uh, the, we see the amount of fluid which is taken in by the patient. And according to the time at which is, it is taken, in the second column is the voided urine and the timing at which this urine is voided. And in the third column are the symptoms. So as we can see that this patient is uh, passing an excessive amount of fluids uh, urine in uh, during the daytime and uh, at night also twice in the night and during the daytime and she's passing good um, good amounts of fluid in the urine for example 200 ml 300 ml 250 ml 280 ml the she's free experiencing frequent urges to urinate throughout the day and the night and she also had nocturia but there was no episode of urinary leakage no pain or discomfort during urination. So again, we will calculate the total amount of fluids that she has taken and in during the daytime and the nighttime. We will calculate and add the total amount of urine that she produced and then evaluate that in, with the symptoms. So here we find that the amount of fluid that she's taking in is about 2,300 ml, but she's producing a very large quantity of urine. And this may be causing symptoms of frequency and symptoms of uh, uh, urgency because of the large amount of urine being passed. This woman is producing more urine as compared to her fluid intake, and she may be suffering from either diabetes mellitus diabetes insipidus or from chronic renal failure and further testing is required to identify the cause. So as you can see, the bladder diary will not only tell you about bladder symptoms, but it may also tell you about other conditions 
which may be causing some change in the urinary pattern as a result of which the patient is now experiencing urinary symptoms. In this particular case, she is experiencing frequency during the daytime and the nighttime. In the third case, example number three, we again see these three columns and we see that the patient is uh, experiencing symptoms such as frequent urges to urinate during the day as well as nighttime. And she only woke up once during the nighttime. She has passed urine um, and leaked urine uh, once during the day. And she also had stress incontinence once in the evening when she was coughing while sitting down after dinner. In this particular case, we find that the total amount of fluids which was taken in was 2,100 ml and the total urine passed was 2,900 ml. Patient seems to have mixed incontinence with urge incontinence as well as stress incontinence and further testing is required for diagnosis. So it is very clear that the bladder diary will help us to evaluate the symptoms but will not give us a diagnosis. Even after evaluation of symptoms on history taking, you can sometimes identify the underlying diagnosis because if the patient has only stress incontinence, then you can understand that this is the main symptom. Or if the patient has mainly urge incontinence, you, you can understand that this is the problem. However, when you have mixed symptoms, then this kind of bladder diary will be very effective in eye highlighting to the patient and to the healthcare provider the kind of fluid intake the amount of urine being outputted and how it is affecting the patient's symptoms. So the previous three examples were very simple examples of uh, how a bladder diary can be configured and how it can be used by the patient. However, you can have very elaborate bladder diaries and depending upon what kind of patient volume you have, what kind of patients are coming in and depending upon how you want to collect the information, and this is an example of such a slightly more complex um, uh, bladder diary configuration. At the same time, the diary will also contain a page or two pages to contain accurate information about the patient's history, her drug intake, her medical history to try to identify how that may be influencing the urinary frequency or urgency or stress patterns. With this, we come to the end of the video. If you like the video, then please subscribe, like, share, comment, and press the bell icon. Thank you and goodbye.